Welcome to Autism 101, an introduction to autism spectrum disorder for educators. This presentation is to give teachers an introduction to autism and how it might affect a student in their classroom. It will go over the triad of characteristics and the audience is assumed to have limited knowledge of autism. Teachers, you would not be expected to leave this presentation knowing how to implement an intervention as this will come in further webinars. Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder with deficits in social communication and social interactions across multiple contexts and restricted repetitive patterns of behavior, interests, or activities. Symptoms are present in the early developmental period of child development, and ASD is what we commonly refer to as Autism Spectrum Disorder. This sounds like a bulky definition, but if we break it down, Neuro means brain-based, and that involves both structure and connections. Developmental, because it's something that typically starts before age three, which is in the developmental period, and because it causes delays or problems in many different skills that arise from infancy to adulthood. And disorder means it's not a delay in development, but a difference in the typical pattern of child development. ASD can also co-occur with an intellectual disability or a developmental delay. The Medical Diagnostic Manual notes three levels of severity based on the amount of support required for social, communication, and restricted repetitive patterns of behavior. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, the national rate of children identified with ASD is 1 in 44 children. This statistic is based on their evaluation of health and educational records of eight-year-old children in 2018 across 11 states, including New Jersey. New Jersey had one of the highest rates of autism in the nation with one in 35 children or 2.8% of eight-year-old children. Since the study began over 20 years ago, the ADAM or the Autism and Developmental Disabilities and Monitoring Network has been reviewing records of eight-year-olds in New Jersey and across the country and issuing biannual reports on their prevalence findings. The 2021 prevalence report is from records reviewed in 2018. The New Jersey study lead investigator, Dr. Walter Zarodny, an associate professor at Rutgers New Jersey Medical School, suggests that the higher rate in New Jersey is likely due to more people knowing about autism and referring children to experts to document their concerns. These detailed reports then provide the investigators a more complete picture of children's challenges and possible diagnosis. Without any reports, other states could be underestimating the rate of autism, he stated. Certainly, greater awareness in public health education by the government and advocacy groups like Autism New Jersey contribute to the increase. New Jerseyans also have more access to diagnostic services, so more children are evaluated. Historically in New Jersey, Black and Hispanic children were diagnosed less often and at later ages than their white peers. However, this has changed. In 2014, New Jersey for the first time ever reported no racial disparities at their prevalence in each ethnic group was nearly identical, demonstrating that public awareness about autism has reached and spurred minority communities. This trend continues with the most recent findings from the 2021 report. Nationally, disparities in the evaluation and diagnosis of ASD across racial backgrounds continue to persist. Consistent with previous national and New Jersey finding, boys were identified at a rate four times that of girls. Among New Jersey, children who had IQ scores available, 34.6% also had an intellectual disability meaning that 65.4% of children with ASD have average or above average IQs. This percentage is consistent with national figures, which reports 35.2% of children with ASD as having an intellectual disability. Even though ASD can be diagnosed as early as age two, most children are not diagnosed with ASD by a community provider until ages three to five, depending on how ASD is presented in the child. The 2020 study revealed that more children are being evaluated and identified at younger ages. The goal remains to diagnose ASD as early as possible to ensure children have access to educational supports as soon as possible. Autism spectrum disorders are neurodevelopmental disorders resulting from genetic factors, which can cause abnormality in brain development, 
likely occurring prenatally. The exact etiology is unknown, but they are highly heritable with younger siblings of a child with ASD at an 18.7% increase risk of developing autism. Autism is a spectrum of disorders, so deficits and strengths can look very different depending on the individual. The symptoms of ASD follow along a continuum ranging from mild to severe, affecting each individual differently and can vary with an individual as they age and gain experience. While the word continuum is used, this does not refer to a linear approach as presented on the current slide. This is the traditional way of viewing autism. However, we know through research and observing individuals with autism that the continuum is in fact not linear. Let's take a closer look at what I mean on the next slide. The common phrase, if you met one person with autism, you have met one person with autism, is quite true. This slide is to give a visual of why every person is different. They can be anywhere on the continuum, each particular area, rarely does an individual line up in the same place in each area. For example, take Bobby, the image on the right. He has an IQ of less than 70, he's minimally vocal, and he lives in community housing. You can see that his symptoms of ASD present more severely in all areas except for aggression. Now take Ben, the image on the left. He has an IQ of over 130. He's completely vocal and holds a six-figure job and lives by himself. He is higher up on the continuum for aggression. The one thing though that both of these individuals have in common are difficulties or differences in depression, posture, and social difficulty. Knowing this information can make it quite complicate it when we're working with students in schools, as no two people with autism are the same. Here's a quick active responding question. I'll read it over and then you will take three seconds to think about your answer before the next slide. Autism spectrum disorder is A, a neurodevelopmental disorder, B, can look very different among individuals, C, includes differences in social communication and behavior, or D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. If this is what you were thinking, way to go, you were right. Let's now talk a little bit more about social communication and behavior. The three common areas affected for all people on the autism spectrum are social communication and behavior. We refer to this as the triad of characteristics. When programming for students with autism, the team should look at all three areas and provide specific instruction and or accommodations to support that student. You can see from this image that the three characteristics are all interrelated with one another. The triad of characteristics can look like, in the social area, significant difficulties or differences or both in interacting with or understanding people and events. In communication, there may be significant difficulties or differences which extend beyond speech and language to other aspects of social communication, both receptively, which is a listener, and expressively, which is a speaker. Finally, in behaviors, which can also be referred to as restrictive repetitive activities or interests, the student may seek consistency in environmental events to the point of exhibiting significant rigidity in routines and displays marked distress over changes in the routine and or has a significantly persistent preoccupation with an attachment to objects or topics. So that's a lot. Let's look at each of these individually. In the social area, you might see someone struggling with commenting on the feelings of others or have a limited understanding about other people's perspectives and feelings. There could be little to no conversational skills and there could also be a lack of joint attention. Uh, for example, eye contact, smiling at other persons and greetings, looks when the name is called and so forth. Students with autism can struggle with social competency, which is the ability to accommodate or adapt to ongoing social situations according to a set social norms, rules and routines. While many of us learn this through watching others, through our environment and past experiences, students with autism may need to be explicitly taught the expectations for different social situations. Students may experience emotions differently and have differences in their reactions. They may want to make friends but don't know how to do so. 
Some students may prefer to be alone and thus play alone. Also, students may have no or limited eye contact or what we call fleeting eye contact. In addition, students may not respond to you or others in their environment, especially when they are engaged in activities that are of interest to them. With girls, they may appear to be more social, but they still have those core deficits. Some students have difficulties with personal space. They may stand too close to others or need people to stand back and out of their personal space. In addition, they may lack tact or come off rude. Working in groups is challenging due to the unspoken rules around group participation, such as organizing, discussing, and making decisions, but it is important life skill that the student learn to work in a group, and they should not always be allowed to work alone. For example, as an employee, they have to take their instructions from their boss and get along with their coworkers. It's also important in relationships. You may see older students, for example, teenagers, they may express feelings of isolation, even going to the extent to invent a make-believe world in which, presumably, is to escape the social world in which they do not understand. As students get older and ha have not learned how to relate to their peers in a positive way and develop these friendships, they tend to give up and socially isolate themselves. Being ignored by their peers is common. Therefore, instructional strategies should focus on socialization skills and start working on these very early. The next few slides, we will talk about a few different ways we can work on social skills with students on the spectrum. Remember that the intent of this uh, training is not to uh, specifically teach you how to implement an intervention, but just basically provide you background knowledge. Uh, further trainings will go over each of these. With that being said, here are a couple social interventions that you may use in the classroom to address the social deficit skills of your students with autism. They include social stories, contingency maps, video modeling, cartooning, power cards, and peer mediated instruction and intervention. In addition to social differences, most people with autism will display differences in communication skills. While some may not have vocal verbal language and others may struggle with the ability to get their needs met in efficient and appropriate manners. In addition, you may see students having difficulty reporting events, difficulties integrating gestures into conversations, or even challenges with initiating, maintaining, and or ending conversations. Furthermore, students may demonstrate stereotypy or idiosyncratic use of words and or phrases that can sound very different from their peers. Students with communication challenges may not pick up on the rules of conversations, for example, acting as a listener and then a speaker. The subtleness of language may be missed, such as sarcasm, jokes, idioms, and inferences. Casual conversations can be challenging, and because of this, there could be differences in tone, rate, and porosity of their speech. Many students may appear to understand more than they actually do, and then some may display with an advanced vocabulary by using advanced words. However, they may not always know the meaning. Students can really struggle with that turn-taking back and forth rhythm of conversation. Facial expressions or tones of voice are not always read accurately. There may be difficulty expressing their words and our feelings. Some students with autism find it challenging to listen or show enjoyment in other people's interests and conversations which can come off rude and can alienate them from their peers. And then many process visuals more accurately than they do auditory information. So when you're working with students with autism, we wanna clearly state our point. We do not want to rely on body language, gestures, or voice inflection to provide meaning. For example, the term, that's great, can mean the opposite just by the way it's stated and lead to confusion. We also want to remember that it can take time for some students with autism to process information. For students who are more visual learners, who struggle with auditory information, may need that wait time so that they can process, then respond to your request. Here are some interventions, however, not exhaustive, and there are other trainings around application and implementation of these and other communication interventions in other trainings. But to start with, you want to give instructions as directives and not questions. For example, go line up versus can you go and line up? Many times we fall into the trap of wanting to sound nice and we end up stating a question. Can you open your math book? 
which automatically gives the student the opportunity to say no or I'm not ready. So we really just want to be clear and state all requests and instructions as directives. We want to demonstrate or model instructions and support those with visuals. If multiple instructions are given, write them down in order of completion, like a task analysis, and we most certainly want to use visuals to increase understanding and memory. A lot of teachers would put multi-step directions on the board, but it's important to remember that a student with autism may struggle to access that and they may need closer proximity to the instructions. In communication, before we start talking, we want to ensure we get the student's attention. You can say their name, place yourself beside the student in their line of sight, and use physical distractions if ne necessary, such as clapping hands, um, saying one, two, three, eyes on me, etc. We want to avoid excessive talking using fewer words so they can process what you are saying without getting overwhelmed and shutting down. The third area of the triad is called repetitive activities and restricted interest. The rigidity and routines are persistent preoccupation with objects or topics can interfere with the student's daily living and learning. Some students may have persistence on routines that can result in difficulties with transitions, flexible thinking, problem solving, or thinking of more than one way to handle a situation, and or playing with peers due to the complex demands of social cognitive flexibility in pretend play situations. You may see students engage in repetitive body movements. Some common ones are rocking, hand flapping, and finger flicking. However, there are many more repetitive body movements that your students might engage in. Also, students may have few interests. They can overfocus on odd topics of interest, for example, weather, dinosaurs, geodes, and so forth. Furthermore, the interest can be narrower with preoccupation on parts of objects. For example, the propeller of a plane, wheels on a ve vehicle, to name a few. Mental flexibility is our ability to easily shift from one idea to another, adjust our train of thought, activity, or way of looking at things another way. Students with autism may struggle with this. You may see your student perseverate on something, have difficulty accepting your feedback, and resistance. They may come off argumentative or stubborn and appear to lack empathy. It's important to remember that this is a skill deficit and may need to be specifically taught. We might want to use social stories to help teach solutions or coping strategies for different situations. These could look like stopping thoughts, relaxation, or coping strategies such as deep breathing, calming self-talk, or leaving a situation until calm. We might want to help them understand why certain strategies work for one problem and not for another. Teach them to differentiate when to use what strategy. Role playing ahead of time can help generate more than one outcome and different possible solutions. We want to get to know and understand the areas of interest that our students have. This will allow us to get creative in planning the classroom. Although it may not be possible to engage in such child directed episodes of instruction all the time, Educating for students with autism is enhanced by recognizing and using their different motivations and interests. These interests could be very different from their peers. We may also consider providing a socially appropriate time for the autistic student to engage in their repetitive behaviors. It is important to never take this away from a student unless you are replacing the behavior with another. We also want to use special interests to increase compliance by providing reinforcement. Academic expectations need to be kept in line with the student's abilities, and these abilities cannot always be determined by the traditional ways we typically assess students. For example, the standardized test may not give you the information that you need to know. Expectations that are not attainable usually lead to disruptive behaviors. Students with autism need to have their learning styles assessed. Let's take a closer look at this. We know that we all have different learning styles. What the research shows us is that students with autism tend to be more visual learners who may need clear and simple instructions and activities broken down into more manageable parts. Information presented should also be in sequential format. In the next few slides, we will talk about some ways to support students using visuals. Visual supports are used to support access to curriculum and increase success in the school environment. Visuals can increase independence, which in turn reduces frustration levels and they can be used multiple settings from the school to the home and to the community. It is important to understand that visual supports may be necessary throughout the lifetime of the individual 
which extends into post-school environments such as vocational and job settings. With that being said, it is important to remember that we never want to take away the visual supports, but they can be adapted to the student's skills as they gain more skills and grow. If you think about it, we all use visual supports daily and we would be lost without them. You want to establish a daily routine as much as you possibly can, particularly for young students. This helps students predict what is going to happen and prepare themselves for the transitions that occur throughout the day. You can do this by using picture schedules, planners, checklists, or even electronic organizers to assist students with organizing their day and prepare them for what their day will bring. For more training on how to implement visual supports in your classroom, you can check out other trainings revolving around visual supports. Ward and Allen in 2000 once said, the more information you as a teacher have regarding a student with autism, the more ideas and strategies you will have to help them learn. Thank you. On behalf of the New Jersey Department of Education, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram and reach out with any questions.